Hi, my name is Mike Pucciarelli, and tonight I'll be talking about still life photography. First part will be the white plexus table. Second part will be the black plexus table. At first, I want to just talk about who I am. I started professional photography in 2010. Got a history in 2013, and then in 2015, I joined Professional Photographers of America. In 2017 and later, then I joined some of the affiliate clubs like the Maryland, and then later the Philadelphia Club, and then later the Georgia, and then I'm a member of ASP. So today's demo, in the Photoshop demo, we talk about how I use Photoshop. I use actions differently and I use blend modes differently. And I'm going to talk about how I process these images in Photoshop. So tonight's agenda, we're going to talk about a white plexus table. And then we're going to talk about strobes, of course, but then we're going to talk about how to use simple lighting modifiers like white cards, silver cards. You can use that in place of a strobe and there's so many things you can do with white cards and you know non-electric modifiers. And then I talk about camera settings. Then after the camera settings section, I'm going to talk about the Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. And you can always email me at mputurelliart2016 at gmail.com. So tonight's lecture, of course, the part one is going to be on a white plexus table. There are other tables, but we'll talk about them later. But tonight's lecture is going to be, you know, of course, the black square, the white plexus table. These are some lighting modifiers that we could be used with any table. And this includes the white plexus table. Anything silver is great for adding light in a dramatic way. And anything white is great for adding light in a soft way. And then there are black cards. Black cards, some people call minus cards, but black cards are great for controlling when the strobe has too much light, or if you want to get rid of a nasty glare, it's when you use a black card to block the, the glare so it come, doesn't come out in the photograph. And you can also use a polarizer too. Then there's ways to use plastic fusion scrims. And it's great that you saw, it's a great way to soften the light with plastic fusion scrims. And we'll talk about how to make those later. Then there's colorful gels. Colorful gels are great for changing the color of the background and also the color of the subject. Then the medium-sized white plexiglass sheets, they're great for adding walls you put in front of the strobe and to make the light softer. And then there's cinephil. And cinephil is like black aluminum foil. It's great for creating a snoot on a budget or a tight budget. And then blinds are great for natural light and they're great with any table, including the white plexiglass table. And then the next section, they're tools like spring clamps, C or G clamps, all sizes are great. These are great for holding stuff like duct tape and clothespins. And you know, duct tape is great for and clothespins are great for attaching this gel on the strobe. And there are ways to use the spring clamps or G clamps with holding the scrim. And I'll talk about that later. And some of this you can buy at an art store. Some of this you can also buy at a hardware store. And then some of this you can also buy at a drugstore like Safeway. This is the white plex table. I bought this at Amazon because it's cheaper, but BH sells them too. 
and I still use a flex table today. And in many ways, you can use this table, and I'll talk about that later. Like I said, there are many ways to use this table. You can use it with one light, one flash. You can use it with a lead light, continuous light. You can use it with natural light. And when you use a white plexiglass table, two things are important. Angle the camera and position the light. For a certain photograph, you need a certain angle. And the same thing with a certain position. Like if you want a reflection, you put the light at a certain angle. If you don't want a reflection, like you want to have the product, like it have a floating characteristic, you put the lights underneath. And I'll demonstrate that coming up. This is a simple setup with one light. You just have a light that'll shine right above it. Now, if you want to add more light, you can have like a silver card here or a silver card here or a white card or a silver card. So if you need to sprinkle some more light, you could get another strobe, but you can also add like a white card. And you want to make sure you aim at a 45 degree angle or a silver card or a mirror. Now, there are many ways to use the scrims. And like if this were a shiny subject, I'd recommend the scrim to take out the harsh glare. And I'd always do this in white or black because it makes color correction easier. This is another way to use one light. You have the strobe in front of a white scrim. It aims right at the camera. And this is a glass subject. And the light will shine right through. Now, if you want to add lights, you can put a white card here or a silver card here. So there are many ways to use non-electric modifiers like the white card, silver cards to add lights. And sometimes, you know, you just need another light. And I'll demonstrate that soon. This is a way to use two lights. This is one way. We have a light here that goes at a 45 degree angle. You have a light here at a 45 degree angle. Or you can have a light on top. Or you can have, you know, you have a big light, like the beginning slide. You have a silver card. So you don't always have to use strobes for light. You can use white cards, silver cards. And I recommend using like a scrim in front of the light so it comes out softer. You might want to feather the light you get the certain lighting characteristic you like because you know we're all light writers. Every person writes light differently and the ways to use scrims and white cards and black cards. And then sometimes you just need a third light and I'll demonstrate that coming up. This is another way to use two lights. You can have the light here, or you can have the light coming at a 40 degree angle. You can also bounce light in with the white card, with the silver card. I'm using two lights because this is not glass. So we, we need a light. We need a light in front of it somehow. This is how to use, one way to use three lights. We have a light coming at a 40 degree angle. We have a light underneath, right underneath. In this photograph, this will have like a floating characteristic. If you wanna see the reflection, you wanna leave the light close to the edge. You wanna sort of angle the light. 
and you want to power down your strobe so you get out the reflection. And this is the background light. You can do this with continuous, but you can, most of the times I, do, I use flash. So I get, the, you know, the characteristic you like, it's a matter of positioning the lights and the camera. And I recommend if you like, you know, changing the color of the backgrounds, use gels. And I'll demonstrate how to use gels on a strobe. And you can use gels to change the color of the subject and background. This is how to use a gel on a strobe. These are armature clips. And this is just a gel that I bought from uh, Plaza Arts. Or you can use clothes pins and you attach the gel on the strobe. You can also do the same thing with small spring clamps. You can also do it with duct tape or any type of strong tape. And for this, you can use C clamps or spring clamps. You can do the same thing. These are just armature clamps. And this is how you use spring clamps. And I also have the big five inch ones, but these are the three inch ones. You can do the same thing with C or G clamps. And you can also use spring clamps to hold walls up on a table. And this is great for bouncing in light. This is also great for, if this were a scrim, the strobe would be right here. It's great for holding anything, like any type of wall. You wanna experiment with the, power, with the spring clamps. Try bigger ones, but I'm fine with the three inch ones. And this is a scrim, and I make these scrims with stretcher art frames at Plaza Arts. And I bought the Fusion Paper uh, BH. And this is just a grid. And this, both of these, the scrim and the grid, make you know, the light more smoother, more contrastful. This is just a wall. holding up a wall together. These are spring clamps, and this is a plastic fusion. So if any questions, you can just email me at mputurellyart2016 at gmail.com. We're gonna talk about the camera settings. This applies to any camera, not just the camera I use. All DSLRs should be able to, you know, change their ISO, aperture, shutter speed. For still life, I like to start using 1 1 25th at f16. Sometimes I have to cut this in half by making it 1 2 50th. I like to try to always use ISO 100. It's the lowest ISO. I like to shoot in manual mode where you control the shutter and the aperture. Now, if I use bulb mode, it's for light painting. I like to use the standard picture size is the sharpest. And this right here is the daylight white balance. It's balanced at uh, 52K. This is like for evaluated mode. This is great for contrast, good contrast in photographs. And I always shoot in raw because you have the most editing capability. And this is, I think this is the 19 point focus mode with technology advancing, it's even higher than 19 point, 24 points or even higher. I have focus is great for still life. And then it's one picture for shooting because I take one shot at a time. But sometimes I can use the timer or the H plus or, or high other um, focus modes. The white balance, like I said, I always use daylight white balance because the temp, because the, in the camera, it's about 52K. And these are the other temperatures of the white balance. 
Auto I never use because it's at least natural and you're putting an artificial color in the photograph and I don't want that. I know some people, they custom white balance. You set the white balance by shooting a white card in manual focus and you just set the white balance. The problem with that is if the light changes, then you have to do a new custom white balance. That's why I just like to use the daylight it's set at about 50 dk and you could also set the white bound you could set the kelvin to 55 5500k and this is all measured in kelvins this is a diagram for the noise reduction one is automatic and two something happens regardless of what type of photograph you take. Two is great for correcting blue color cast. Because if you're using long exposures, you could have a blue color cast problem. And that's why you use two. But it's time to just use one. An algorithm may or may not happen, but two is stronger. And algorithm will happen. And if you use two, it'll take a while to get back to the original screen. But two is great for correcting uh, blue color cast. And today's DLSRs, they don't have this problem as much as they did when they started. But most of the times I just use one. But one or two is good. I like to use two, the strong uh, ISO noise reduction. One's good, but it's better to use one or two than disable. This is the, another camera diagram where some people start at sRGB. They say that's great for color correcting. I like to start from Adobe RGB and then convert over to sRGB. There's a big difference between the number of colors with HRGB. It's 256 times 256 times T56. Then Adobe, it's like 57 million colors. And then it's ProPhoto. It's like 281 trillion colors. But the problem with ProPhoto is that some of the colors the human eye cannot recognize. But things are changing that people may start using ProPhoto then Adobe RGB. And then there's exposure bracketing where if you want to take the same image with a stop apart or two stops apart, depending on how much light you have. That's great if you want to um, bring out the highlights and shadows more. All depends on the lighting condition. There are many ways to clean the white Lexus table. Most of the times I just use one for a clean shine, but if there's little scratches, I use two, and then I use one. If there are big scratches, I use three, then two, then one. But most of the times I just use one just for a, just a shine. You can buy this at any auto store, or you could also, Amazon also sell this through a hardware store. The bottom things, the turkey tweezers and the lens blower, this is great for blowing up dust. You use this a lot more in a plaque plex table than the white, but then I just recommend using like a lint cloth for just a gentle wipe all over the table. These are what my mirrors look like. These are armature clips. These clips are great for holding up mirrors. You buy these at CVS. This is part of a mirror that I took apart where the frame was sort of falling apart. So I salvaged all the mirror plates. I still have the empty frame. This is duct tape, good for holding stuff. This is armature wire. This is great for holding up something. This is how they did it in the film days where you angle the camera and it appear, the subject appears to be in like a floating motion. 
These are CG clamps. These are great for holding up, you know, scrims, great for holding up scrims on the wall, which I'll demonstrate in part two. And these spring clamps are great for holding up walls. This is what the five inch one looks like, the three inch one, and the smaller ones. And then you have clothespins are great for um, holding up gels on the strobe. You could also do the same thing with the small uh, spring clamp. These are what gels look like. These are plaza arts. And there are many ways to use gel to change the color and backgrounds. Then you have silver cards. These are great for adding light without using another strobe. Or if you use gold, you get a yellowish tint. Then you have foil paper or black aluminum foil. This is great for attaching on a strobe to use as a snoot if you're so tight in budget. And this is like draft film paper. You can buy this at an arts or like Plaza Arts. This is great for making like a plastic fusion backgrounds. These are what my screens look like. You can buy the frame at a store or you can make them with stretcher frames of Plaza Arts. You can buy different drafting film paper. You have like, on the right, it's like, these are white plexiglass sheets. This is great to be used in many ways as a small table on a stool. This is black plexiglass sheets. You can do the same on a stool. And you have clear. This is great if you have like, a white background on the floor. It's great for photographing food out of, that will um, have a floating characteristic. These are various types of white cards. This thing here is for good for food. You can also have aluminum like this. And it's, these big white cards they're great for creating either a white background or a gray background, depending on where you use or have the light. And they're black cards, and black cards are great for, especially this is where a strobe and it's bleeding too much light, you would cover part of the light to control the lighting so your image looks good. And you could use them, um, the black backgrounds, you could have a light background or a gray depending on where you put the lights. Now I'm going to go in to Adobe Photoshop. Actually, I'm going to go to Camera Raw, Adobe Bridge. First, I'm going to talk about the, I'm just going to talk about the white plexi images because we're talking about, of course, the white plexi table. I'm going to do Control or Command R to bring up the raw thing. I'm going to set my white pounds. I'm going to try to find a gray. It's best if you do this with a gray card or a color checkered. I'm going to look at the image. Increase the contrast a little, decrease the highlights. I'm going to increase the shadows. I'm going to increase the texture. I want to use like an S curve to bring out the make a contrast. Detail for product photography, I like to try to using use a sharpening over 140. I'm going to reduce the noise reduction at 50, 50%. 50 I like to use 50 so it's not too obvious. I like to improve 
the noise, color noise by just like five. This is great. If you want to adjust the color, I never touched that. This is great if you want to work on the highlights individually or the midtones or the shadows, or if you want to work on all three, you can at the same time. I'd like to remove the chromatic aberration and use profile corrections. I like to um, use this. It's auto, it does automatically for you. There are other ways you can do it too. Sometimes for effect, vignetting, you can put in a vignette effect in, you can take it out, then you click done. Now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna go control R, I'm gonna do control A, and I'm gonna right click on your sync settings. I don't wanna mess with this vibration or saturation. I don't want to uncheck what I don't want to use. So now they all have a similar um, white. I'm going to do control R to check something. So they should have all the same. Do control R. Now in this one, we got a problem. The background, the white background is killing the subject. So what I like to do is adjustment brush. I want to just take down the exposure, increase the contrast. Try to make it look more natural. I just want to see if I can take out this harsh white background. Your goal is to make this look really natural. So now I'm going to talk about Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to now go to the, my folder. I'm going to have my desktop. I'm going to go to my, got to get this thing out of the way. White Plexi. I'm just going to click open. Now in Photoshop, what I want to demonstrate is there are ways to use actions and blending modes to make your job a lot easier. And I'm going to run an action. I'm going to but then I'm going to show you what's inside what's going on inside. Now if I, I'm in button mode, all I do is click the button and something happens. See, I have a lot of actions. 
When it says play action, when it says play action, it's calling another action. So my actions, the way I use actions is, I recommend everybody do this is, if you're comfortable using actions, use those actions to help you create actions quicker. If you need to become more comfortable with actions, then just start playing around with actions, start downloading and stuff like that. Now I'm gonna switch back in the button mode because I just like to click buttons. And this is my workspace. <laughs> I have my layers, channels, paths, history, actions, adjustment, properties, info. And then I have my brush. And I'm going to go to my layers. I'm going to move the, this over here. I'm inverting these because what I want to do, I want a burning characteristics. I want a dodging characteristics. Now, some people, what they do is, if this were a model, they'd be burning in the shadows. And then you dodge in the highlights. I like to do this. There's many ways to do things in digital photography. I like to use the brush, just a soft round brush. I'm going to make it bigger by pressing the right bracket key. And I'm just going to paint, whoops, and make sure that when you paint the mask, make sure that you use a normal blending mode, a opacity of 100. So I just burned in everything. Now I'm going to dodge in everything. And then I'm going to use the middle slider to bring out the contrast. And then I'll talk about another action where it's called frequency separation. I like to use our bigger radius than the default. And the way this works is you have your high frequency and then you have your low frequency. I like to do some cloning on the high frequency. And some people use a low frequency as they have, some people they use um, a brush for certain things, that's a layer. Then you use a clone, or all these tools, every tool some people do is, every tool is a different layer here but I can combine everything. Many ways to use the frequency separation. It's just a way to clean the photo. And you wanna make sure that you have sample layers not checked. And then I'm gonna talk about another action where You gotta find it. I'm gonna go here. Uh, I'll do run it first. Then when I go to button mode, this the speckle is an action somewhere else in my actions, and so is dust and scratches, and MF sharpen, 
and the settings are all set. And all I have to do is just click the button. So I'd recommend everybody to use be comfortable with you know button mode. And if you can speed it up by combining actions and other actions, go for it. And all you have to do is click buttons and then I'm going to put a black frame. Suppose I have the enter this in for IPC. Oops. There we go. IPC. And it does the frame. Now I'm going to bring out of the button mode. This is the name of the action. In its condition, it calls other actions. So I would just, you know, use actions. And this is a condition. I'm calling other actions. Let me just bring this up. Oops. Doesn't seem that. So this is the black frame. You play an action. Here, if the document is landscape, do this. If not, do something else. And it calls other actions. Put it back in button mode. Then when I save it, I do a quick export, but I'm going to show me export preferences. Like these quality of 100, it's going to ask every time we're exported. And I recommend everybody put your copyright info in here, you could update it. I'm going to convert the sRGB. I want to push S12 to bring back the original file. No, I don't want to save. So I'm going to open up the next. Open up. I'm going to do my actions. Again, I'm going to invert the layer, the masks. I'm going to also use a soft brush. Now, what I could do is sometimes if I have shadows here, that's called vignetting, I can go back to the Adobe Camera Raw, I even have an action for that, but I some, you know, and then I come over here, maybe I can put in vignetting. I could also just, sometimes I just like to use Go back into the raw image and just make an adjustment. So now what I'm going to do, I'll make this more interesting. So 
So what I'm going to show you the filth that is I used. Um, I use a speckle. I use dozen scratches. I like to use this at three. The action set to three. And then I like to use sharpen. The action will set the sharp the amount to 200. So I go to actions. I'm going to click this button. See, I'm just calling the speckle. I'm calling the dust and scratches. These are filters. And I'm calling the sharpen. And these actions are elsewhere in my program. See, dozen scratches, radius three. Unsharp mask. And then the spickle. Then I'm going to put a black frame Okay, now I'm going to get out of button mode. And I call actions that are defined elsewhere. I have a condition. And these actions are all defined elsewhere. back in the button mode. Again, I could use, you know, frequency separation. So to download and make changes. I'm going to push F12. I'm not going to save any changes. Remember, I already made the changes using a brush and brush. Now, I learned things the hard way. There's still things wrong with this image. When you when you enter food and IPC, if there's a defect in the image, do not enter the image, okay? You live and you learn, and I did. <laughs> But computing is all about keep trying. And the critiques really, really help. So if you compete, I would suggest that you get a critique if you can. Or get someone to critique it, depending on the competition. Right now, I'm just scrolling up. I have many actions. Again, I get my brush. You want the blend mode at a normal with the opacity of 100. And you paint the whole photograph. Try to make it look natural. I suppose I still wanted to work in the background. 
There's a few things I can do. I could do object selection. This is a pretty good selection. If I need to increase it, I push the Alt key. You see how it changes the minus. And then if I increase it, I push the Shift key and I increase it. Control D. We can also do select subject. And then I'm going to invert because I want to select everything outside the subject. And then I do this because if the background were two whites, I would just do this. And the whole point of this is it's to make the background to compete less for the subject. You know, sometimes you want to have a natural shadow in because it looks very natural. That's why sometimes, you know, I just know it's not perfect, but this is just for teaching purposes. And I could use frequency separation. And I'm going to my actions, my three things I use. And then again, We have my three background, my, you know, I'm calling the, the speckle filter, the settings already set, the same thing with the dusts and scratches and the sharpen. And all you have to do, click buttons. Then if I want to put a frame, I'm going to use a different frame. I'm going to use, uh, let's see, IPC gray. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show the action. And basically, this is if I were to enter an IPC and I wanted to use a gray frame, this calls actions. This is an action. So these actions are just they're calling each other. They're throughout the program, my actions. I'm going to push F12. If there are any questions, just let me know and I'll get my email at the end of the presentation. And these are my Facebook groups. This used to be called Still Life Photography Creative. I decided to put the words fine art because that's what we're really about. This is my architect group. And then the name of this used to be called F Stop International, but now it's called Photographer Display Gallery International. And I organized several meetup clubs. And these are my business links, my Instagram, Twitter, find our website, portfolio. If you have any questions, just email me with at mputrelliart2016 at gmail.com. Thank you for letting me give this presentation.